Hey everybody, welcome to their GMG review. Today I'm taking a look at Marvel Crisis Protocol, the new two-player starter set from Atomic Mass Games and Asmodee, um, which is a battle royale superhero game um, in the theme of, you know, your favorite Marvel DC movies where superheroes all join into big teams and then fight. The, the, you know, the ones that come around every five years, basically, after six other movies have built the team and told the backstory and then everybody starts punching. Um, so this is Crisis Protocol. This is the uh, two-player starter set, uh, and it provides you with a whole lot of stuff, uh, all in hard plastic. So um, we're going to go through today, open it up. I've actually put together the bulk of the miniatures, but I left some on the sprue so you can see what they look like on the sprue. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, give you an overview of the contents of the box. So what do you have in here? You have a big mixed cast of goodies and baddies, basically. Um, you have some core Avengers, uh, including Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Black Widow, Spider-Man and of course um, Captain Marvel and then some core bad guys. You've got uh, the Red Skull of course um, You've got Ultron, Doc Ock, Crossbones and then Bear and I can't remember his name. Kimo, Kigo, Kib I can't remember. He's like a He's not A-list <laughs> <laughs> He's like Crossbones. He's not super A-list. Um, although Crossbones is basically the Marvel version of Bane. Uh, and, and you've got a ton of terrain. I didn't actually realize the box came with terrain. You have the Daily Bugle, um, which is like a, a little newsstand in here. You have two dumpsters, two crossing lights, two um, uh, just like, like lamp posts, and then two cars as well. Like a whole like stack of terrain actually came in this all in hard plastic. And I was pretty jazzed about that. So let's crack it open and you guys can see the contents. I've left it mostly unassembled so that I can make this unboxing, you know, at least relatively unboxy e e e e I don't know. Uh, so here's our real book. It is not actually the core rules. You can download the core rules. I'll link them below um, for the game. This is a how to play book. This is a learn to play version of the core rules. Uh, it, it'll get you by, but it doesn't have the more um, standardized system for building a team of 10, 10 heroes. Uh, and then determining your secure and your um, extraction protocols for the crisis that you're building when you generate the mission. Uh, it's there's a, there's a bit more structure to team building and mission generation than is what's in here. What you're given in here is you're given a here's how to play, here's how to generate the mission from this box, basically. We'll go through that in a minute. Uh, put that aside for now. You get your team cards. Now these are four by sixes. Uh, so they are on nice card stock and they have two sides. You have your Healthy side, and then your injured side for all the characters. Let's find out what was that, what was that guy's name. Uh, Baron Zemo. I, I knew it was something like, I don't want to say like Baron Samdi. It's Helmet Zero. Zemo. 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 Not Zima. I play liquors from the 80s. Anyway. Um, yeah, there's Crossbones, Captain America, Spider-Man, Black Widow. And so when they get beat up, they flip over to like, they have like a ragged side. It's cool. They get all, their costumes get all torn up, and everybody's all, there's Iron Man all shot up, all ready to be fighting. Now you'll notice on here, there's no team affiliation card. And we'll go through the anatomy of a card in a second when I start going through the, the actual rule book. But there's no like team affiliations. They've made a big point of making it so that you can affiliate any heroes you want. Uh, you get bonuses, leadership bonuses, if you take a team of named characters. And, they, and there's team cards basically for named teams like the Avengers and uh, the Cabal. But you don't have to take them. Uh, you, can just, uh, you can team up anybody you want all day long. Uh, which I think was a smart strategic play. You get tons of tokens, um, everything from your objective tokens for the, the turn, uh, and then here you've got your strikes, it's like your damage, if you're bleeding, if you're stunned and dazed. Uh, these are your power points for when you earn power to use your superpowers, and then various other like in-game effects. Uh, you've got, yeah, so strikes and big strikes. Ba basically everything you need to track what's going on during the course of, a, of a, an actual like crisis. If you're diced, and these are D8s, um, and they're fi you're going to be pretty familiar with the system they use. Uh, it's a system of criticals, strikes, blocks, and then there's a wild card symbol. So there's four symbols. There are uh, where is it? Uh, criticals. That critical symbol seems pretty familiar. So if you played Shade Spire, you probably know what that looks like. Blocks, same thing. Sorry, blocks are there, same thing. It's a shield. Um, and then strikes are just little kabooms. Wild cards, they activate usually, they're like a trigger for activating your special abilities um, during, a, during an attack. And these are fumbles, and the fumbles are, are critical failures. They, they basically can't be re-rolled. So if you roll one of these, you can never set the dice to something else. And then blanks can also have other effects, but are usually a miss. So you've got one blank, one wild, uh, sorry, one uh, critical fumble, one wild, two blanks. 
and then a block, two strikes, and a crit. So you're you're basically three out of eight to hit. If uh, sorry with wild, because wilds usually hit as well, unless an effect like cancels them. So you're 50-50. They're usually a four plus to hit, um, or five plus to hit. With a blank, a fumble, um, and then a uh, uh, what should I call it? A um, a block on there as well. And it's an opposed dice system. So you and your opponent have two stats that are opposed. Your various attack types will have a type, so like a physical attack, an energy attack, or a magical attack. Um, and then everyone has a defense pool, basically, that's like their version of how defending they are against that thing. So super, su certain superheroes are more, more able to like resist certain types of attack. And then you and your opponent roll dice, and you're looking for different successes. So, so it's it's got some DNA from Shade Spire um, or Monster Apocalypse in it, where you're you're rolling dice pools, basically either hit a target number or, or be opposed. In this case, you're being opposed. Uh, the box comes with ten dice. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten. Yep, ten. So it should be enough for you and your opponent. Uh, there's not a lot of stats in here that are higher than like five. So having a handful of five dice typically is gonna gonna be enough for any opposed roll. And then you get a pile of plastic. And this is with me having already built nine of the characters and then half the terrain except for the, the daily bugle i built a car um i built a lamp post a i basically wanted one of each frame a ton of stuff the daily bugle um and the cars are all in one bag now i actually left the bottom off the car because i wanted to paint it separately so i was going to prime one black and then do the other one with my airbrush oh it's a pretty tight fit actually come on you came off last night oh there we go <laughs> broke a wheel off um, but I'll just glue that back on. But uh, the the bottom base plate basically, and then the top of the car go together. And you do get an extra piece here. You get a taxi sign to make one a taxi and one not a taxi, which I was pretty jazzed about. And they're fairly they're fairly like they're, fa they're like they're to scale, and you can easily find toy cars in this scale as well. Uh, then you're gonna get the rest of the Daily Bugle. This is the frame that has, and I wanted to show these off the lamp posts on them. So you can see here, there's actually like a. Um, a different base plate and what they've done which is really smart they've done some really good like like mold, like mold design here everything is sized to only build one way so you can't mess it up even the little like uh, like post holes here basically to put this uh, walk don't walk sign on here is sized so that one goes in the top one goes in the bottom so you can't actually mess it up which is a really slick bit of design same with the base plates you can't mismatch them because they only fit one way which I thought was really cool so this is them when they're all done you can see here's the street light with the, or the street light, just, it's like an old classic, like New York street light. And this one is uh, walk, don't walk sign with a traffic light. So that was slick. The dumpsters are super nice. Ha! <laughs> the dumpsters are super nice. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. And then I also had that SNL skit with uh, the Oscar the Grouch one, which is supposed to be like Joker popping in my head. Uh, they, um, just in like four pieces, uh, these are going to be great for basically anything. They're, they're a perfect scale dumpster. You can make them open or closed if you want. I just made them both closed up. It didn't didn't fuss me to have them be closed. I uh, get two, they're identical. And there are instructions in the rule book for actually building everything. Uh, I want to show you... Oh yes, the Daily Bugle also comes with some, just some scatter. There's like little trash cans and stuff in there. So you get a couple trash cans that are actually really nice on top of that. Uh, they've done a lot to fit as much onto these frames as possible. And even the base frames, because all the bases are textured and pre-done, I, I saved one to show you, because they did some really neat stuff with that. Here's the car on assemble, just the frame of the car. I'm gonna get to the measuring rulers in a second, but here I saved Dr. Octopus on his frame, so you can see these hard plastics. These are hard hips plastic. I used um, Tamiya um, styrene uh, cement to, to weld them all, and they are, they are rock solid. They're not going anywhere anymore. Really minimal mold lines, not a lot of flash. Uh, the the I, I actually I, I didn't realize I because I didn't even crack the rule book. There is full color um, step by step instructions for building them in the back of the book. I I just did it all by eye. Like <laughs> in classic, like no honey, I'll put this IKEA furniture together. I'm just gonna like <laughs> break it open and do it. I had almost no. But the only one that gave me any any like any kind of a hard time was Ultron. Uh, and the coolest part about these was they actually put, if there was a really fiddly little bit, they put doubles and triples on it. So like there was doubles of these little hip plates for Ultron that were like the tiniest piece to go on. Uh, Cap's pouches had doubles. Um, one of uh, um, Black Widow's like little wrist like launchers uh, basically came with a double. It basically, if it was super fiddly and you might drop it and lose it and it wasn't easy to find on a rug, they gave you a second one. And I thought that was super cool. Basically, they just had like a bit of room extra in the space. And it seems like they're, instead of just leaving it empty, which they could totally do, 
the designers went out of their way to just stick a little bit of extra like something on there to, to make it uh, to make it worthwhile having this like an extra space. And they did that again on something else. We'll show you in a second. So here's Doc Ock. You can see um, it's a well sectioned frame. They don't you know waste any space really. I don't know if there's any doubles. Oh, actually, I think there's one, two, three. I, these might actually be doubles. They might give you some choices. If they're the same number, they probably are. That's fifteen, sixteen, and five, six. No, maybe not. There's elevens and twelves here. These might have doubles then. But yeah, super easy to put together. And then his giant base, this is what I want to show you guys. So this was also Ultron's base, was a different base. It's a completely different base on the frame. You get um, uh, two, four, six, eight, uh, they're not 40 mil. They're like 35 mil bases. Yeah, they're like 35 mil bases. Um, and then these are almost 50 mil bases. Uh, but on top of just having the bases on here, they gave you some scatter. There's like a Starbucks cup right there and then a little crushed can and a beer bottle. So you have like these little extra bits of like just debris you can scatter and make your bases unique. And they didn't have to do that. It's literally just the space in between the two frames, but clearly it fits in where they put the, the mold sectional. And they're like, ah, let's put something cool in there. Let's put some junk in. So I thought that was really slick. That's a nice little detail um, that, I, you know, they don't have to do. And it's little bits of attention to detail like that that make you happy when you're building something, right? You have a little bit of like franchise and choice because these are basically one pose models. Like you're not going to repose them. You're not going to make them different. But because I had that little bit of like extra, like, oh, I'm going to put a beer bottle over here. So I like, where was it? I put, um, I put a, a Starbucks cup like just under Spidey's foot right there. Uh, I decided I, I was like, I just want to use this. Like they, they put this on here. I'm going to use it. I think I put a beer bottle somewhere too. There's a beer bottle on the 40 mils. I put a beer bottle on Iron Man's base just to have, well, maybe I'll make it a water bottle. That's much more common to have on the, the street anyway. Um, and then the same hips plastic. Uh, we also have these, which are, I'll put these cards. I can probably get rid of this box now. You guys are just staring at an empty box as I empty it. <laughs> Move this stuff away. Now, um, when the box was packed, most of the stuff was in baggies in this section right here. I thought I was missing a bunch of stuff until I realized they packed it for safekeeping in here. So all of the range rulers and stuff are actually packed on the inside. This isn't just space filler. It's actually there to protect some of the looser things and keep them from getting crushed. I think it was like a bit delicate, like the roofs of the cars and stuff that could get crushed. They made a point of packing in these side bits. So when you open the box, don't just like, be like, ah, oh, where's all my stuff? No, it's it's just, it's they've packed it away a little bit more safely and there there's, it's there, <laughs> basically. But they were smarter than you are, and uh, or than I am at least, and put it to one side. So now this is the one bit where I'm like a little bit, oh, guys, why this isn't? I don't know if this is an asthma day thing, uh, slash fantasy flight thing, um, or not. But we've got two sets of range rulers here. So these are all of your ranges, uh, one through five. And if you don't see a range ruler one, there's a simple reason for that. One is one inch, so it's the side of any of these rulers. And these are the ranges for all your attacks. So they're just rulers. They're just war machine measuring sticks, basically. Um, it's three inch, six inch, eight inch, 10 inch. Uh, if you wanted to use ones from home, like if you didn't want to get the core game for whatever, but you need to get the dice. So you're going to get the core game. And there's a lot of cool heroes in here too. Um, and then your movement sticks. Now this is, <laughs> I, this is an X-Wing thing. This is an Armada thing. This was used in Rune Wars. This is a pretty common mechanic. Uh, for some reason, uh, Fancy Flight slash Asmodee loves measuring sticks. I get it. They make it easy. They make it in. I, you, it's proprietary. It means that your game has a unique thing that's just you. But the only thing that bothers me about it is that they're not in. They're not in any kind of standard size. Like I thought this one was three inches. It's not. It's like three and a quarter. Um, I thought this one was maybe five inches. It's, it's just over five inches. So like, and then this one is like seven and a quarter. So like, they're not like, they're not standardized sizes. Um, they're proprietary sizes basically to use the stick. Now, does it, does it matter? No, uh, it's the same with proprietary dice. I get why it's done. It's, it's a thing that basically locks you into a system. It means you have something that you as a company have branded and can sell. It means you have a, a, a design style that's just yours and a design mechanic that's just yours. I don't know. I, I don't know if it, if it adds more than it subtracts. When we get to looking at the rulebook and we talk about the dynamic movement, it, these do make kind of sense in that um, there's no like measuring up distances ever. You just count, like if you fly or if you climb, you count as being 10 inches tall. So as long as the terrain is less than 10 inches tall, you can hold this thing 10 inches up in the air basically and move that distance 
anywhere you want if that's how far you move. Um, same with like wall crawl or whatever your superpower is that allows you to like go up fast up buildings and things, then you can do it. You can also do the same thing if, for whatever your height is. So let's say that I've got once again Captain Marvel. Now she flies, so it doesn't matter, but I think it's two, um, height two or less, which is three inches or less. She can just walk over top of, like she just, it doesn't matter. She just moves over top of it. So movement is very free form in this game. It's not a, it's not like um, restricted. There's no like precise measuring basically. You're basically just putting the model in range using these sticks. Uh, and and I do I do appreciate that because I don't I don't like trigonometry in my miniature games either. Like there's a, there's a happy balance when you move from from like the trigonometry is basically we want this to be a board game with precision and movement, but we also want the players to handle it all themselves, and it becomes like a stressor. This one is much looser, where it's like you just basically base to where you want to put the base and put it in range. You know, ignore everything less than your height, uh, and if you fly or wall crawl, ignore everything less than height five. So it's not it's not a it's not a bad mechanic, but if these were just a regular size, like if these were actually like three, five, seven, and I could just use a tape measure to do it, I don't I don't know. I just, I'm holding three things instead of one measuring gauge, you know what I mean? Um, but then these are these, these are all standard size. Literally it's three, six, eight, tw ten. So for some maybe it's just like maybe it was just in the casting maybe they're meant to be a standard size or whatever i don't know i know i'm harping on this so much it just is what it is it's a it's a bugbear of mine when you make widgets that you can't easily replicate basically it 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 bothers me so i'll put that stuff away um and then let's look at the rest of the components which is just the cards so these are your team cards so if you want to get the team bonus or the leadership bonus you have the cabal and you have captain america oh, just because you can't see that uh, for the glare. So the Cabal is Red's, uh, Red Skull, Baron Zemo, Ultron's Crossbones, Killmonger, Loki, and MODOK. MODOK! <laughs> the best, worst bad guy. Uh, and then the Avengers, Captain America, Black Widow, Iron Man, Captain Marvel, Hulk, Thor, Black Panther, and Vision. They all count as Avengers. Basically what that means is as soon as you um, take the members of that team, uh, you unlock the leadership ability of the person with the 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 star there so you get to use their leadership ability in the case of like captain america it means that everybody's superpowers cost one less power to activate down to a middle of one because he's he's inspiring them to be awesome uh your deployment style cards so a there's a b c d e f six different deployment styles you've got your extraction protocols and your secure protocols so these are your setup cards so in i'm going to get off the board the, the star set for a second and just talk about how you standard build a team your typical standard team is 10 models any 10 models you want doesn't matter how many how many threat they are or whatever um and then what you do is you're going to roll off to see who has priority priority is just both players roll five dice whoever gets the most added up i think it strikes it strikes defenses crits and wild cards basically anything that's not a fumble or a blank um they have priority for the turn and then they will deal out two there's basically there's two there's always one of each there's two extra two extractions and two things so you would deal these uh secures and extractions <laughs> so for this one it would be uh the daily bugle and mutants of mut sorry, deadly meteor mutate civilians spider-man infected uh invade manhattan sorry spider infected invade manhattan uh and this will tell you how you set up the, the table and then also your threat at the top whoever won the priority roll would determine the threat and that's how much you're going to do so it's, I don't know, it's like, again, it's a weird number. It's 17 threat, uh, which in which in this box set, you have two 17 threat teams. You don't have 10 models, you have five models, but they all add up to 17. So you can just play any of these missions basically out of the box um, and set up and be ready to rock and roll. But the, the crisis cards actually tell you, you're always gonna have one um, extraction, one secure, and they'll tell you how the game's set up and how you win. And then these are all tactics cards. Um, and it's interesting because like there's a whole bunch of like other characters kind of spoiled on here too. You've got like the Winter Soldier, um, more of the Wakandans. Uh, I think that's Nick Fury. Uh, Venom, oh, Thanos. Why not <laughs> Punisher? That's that's what I'm waiting for right there. There's my, there's my man Frank. Uh, Carnage, Rocket, of course, and War Machine. Uh, Black Canary. I think that is, or Black Cat, Black Cat. I can't remember. There's a, there's a there's a DC here that looks exactly like that too. I think it's Black Cat. Um, and then um, Gwen Stacy, oh, of course Hulk. Uh, not Killer Croc, the Lizard Man, the, the version of Killer Croc from Marvel. <laughs> there's too many crossover characters that are like the same person basically. Uh, yeah, Ultrons and more Ultrons and yeah, these are all tactics basically. And what these are is you get to when you build your team pick five tactics cards. 
and those five tactics cards will be like extra powers you can do. This this box set comes with tons of unaffiliated ones. You really want to have two sets because everybody can pick the same ones. So like you'd want a second set of these. And really, this isn't just a two player star set. It is kind of a one player star set because you can use all the here the goodies and baddies together if you want. Um, and then you also have like uh, team ones, so Cabal ones. You'd have to be playing the Cabal to use it. Avengers, Avengers, Cabal, unaffiliated. So you get a stack of ones that just anybody can do. And then to each of the special special hero ones. Second win, he can do it all day. Uh, and then Avengers Assemble, because why not? And then you have uh, Cosmic Invigoration and Dark Rain for the Cabal. I think just add another layer. They're, they're kind of like a bonus power card. Like It's a bit of deck building. It's a bit like the power card system in um, Shadespire when you add that stuff in. So let's look at the rule book. Actually, let's look at the miniatures because we should finish. Actually, I built these for a reason. And I even grabbed a Space Marine so you guys can see how big they are. I thought that was important um, just for scale because these are in a larger scale. They're not in like a standard wargaming like 32 mil. Um, and I figured a primary spring was the, the thing that was most most likely to, to be able to show you the, the scale. So this is a 32 mil base. You can see it's about a 35 mil base. It's not quite 40. It's a little bit smaller than 40. And they're pretty chunky, but that just means they're going to be fun to paint, in my opinion. Uh, people had the same complaint about the Song of Ice and Fire minis when they came out because they were bigger than like a standard wargaming scale. Um, but to be honest, like I, I don't care because they look great together and they're super fun and relaxing to paint. You're not sweating details. Superheroes in general are just wearing like colored pajamas, so you're not typically <laughs> you're not typically worried about the um, the the tiny details. You just kind of like relax and paint, and it's enjoyable. Um, but yeah, the models are great. Tons of detail, and they all are hard hips plastic, so they went together really nice. And just kind of showing you all the details here. So there's Captain Marvel. She's all flying, getting all glowy. They're glowy punching. The man the legend Steve Rogers getting ready to throw a shield. I did have a bit of a casting divot there, which kind of sucked on his shield. I might go back and fill that with some Tamiya putty. But um, it just had a little bit of knot fill in there. Not perfectly round. Good old crossbones. He is he is giving the world's biggest punch right there. Just really leaning into it. Getting ready to, to do the punch in. He had such a terrible like bit part. Which was it? Was it Age of Ultron? I can't... Was it... Maybe it was be Infinity or... Um, uh, the, the Civil War. I can't remember. I can't remember which one he was in, but he had such a like such an unfortunate like end. He wasn't there for very long. Black Widow. Really nice Black Widow, actually. Really nice Black Widow mini. And then Baron, whatever. <laughs> Kimo, Keto, whatever. Baron Keto doing nothing but but eating meat. Um, and you can see here the scale of the the cars is on par as well. It's like a, it's supposed to be like a compact car, so it's not like super huge, but. They're a good size, and the train is fairly interactable, so you can throw stuff and do stuff and throw people into stuff and climb over stuff, uh, and there's a good amount of it. I, I will show, the, when I do the Let's Play, you can see all this stuff together, so you'll have another chance to actually see it, like, in one piece. So let's take a look at the rules and the rule book. And again, this is not the full rule book. I'll link the full rule book below so you can check it out. This is just the Learn to Play book, where you basically get walked through the anatomy of a card and stuff. So all your components. Game overview. Two people beat each other up with superheroes. Yeah, there we go. And then your mission and crisis cards. So you create a mission by combining two different crisis cards. Each mission will always consist of one secure and one extraction. Missions are how people score victory points win the game. Now I should mention it's first to 16. It's a win trigger. So there's no slogging it out. Once somebody's won, they've won. And the game does have a, a win trigger. So the name of your crisis, the type, secure extraction, your maximum threat. Uh, if the threat isn't the same, the person that wins the roll off to see who's going to be uh, having priority at the start of the game will pick which of the maximum threats you use. So the game size could be different every time. That's why you, you have a team of 10, uh, 10 potential heroes that you then draft from into playing the game. Uh, it gives you your special set of instructions and how you score. So like in this one, for instance, uh, the Riot Sparks uh, Extremis 3.0. Place four Extremis consoles, target of opportunity is shown on map D. Uh, players score, and it gives you your map type too. Uh, players score one VP for each extremist console they secure during the uh, cleanup phase. So it'll reference a map card, and what's cool about that is each of these map cards could then have separate, like they just give you like, so those are your, your locations for the objectives and your deployment styles, <clears throat> and then you get given basically um, how you're going to score them. So the, the cards can combine with these differently to give you different missions every time. So another, another mission could use that deployment style um, and like objective deployment, but be totally different ways of scoring too, which I think is cool. Uh, and then you interact with extremist consoles by doing actions to remove a damage from a non dazed character within two inch. So they, they get to like heal each other. And players score a VP for each extremist console they secure during the cleanup phase. And rules priority. 
These are the basic ones, special rules, superpowers, team doctors contradict them. And you, you, if it's specific, like to a card or a, a special rule, then it overrides this rulebook. Uh, this is your mission dashboard. So your mission dashboard basically shows you your turn number, so one through six, and BPs. And each player should have one so that they can keep track of if they've gotten to 16 yet and how many turns are on. Um, and then you have allies, enemies in control. In Crisis Protocol, rules often can turn to uh, allied and enemy characters. Allies are the ones you control, enemies are the ones your opponent controls. Uh, and then if an effect allows player to control an opponent's character, that character isn't considered to be part of them for team decks and leadership. And then stack cards. Okay, let's look at some stack cards. So, Captain America. Actually, it's probably just easier if I pull a stack card here. And we'll look at uh, old Carol Danvers. So, what do you have here? So, your top stats are your vital stats. Uh, you have your stamina, so how much damage you can take before you're gonna you're gonna buy it and get flipped over or dazed. Uh, your movement, so this she moves medium movement. Her height, so she is height two, which means she'll ignore obstructions equal to or less than that. And then um, that right there is her threat. So that's like her point value, basically. So how many points she adds to the team. Uh, then these are defensive stats. So how many defense dice she rolls against physical, against energy, and against mystic, magical. I think it's mystic. Yeah, it is mystic. You can run for these mystic or magical. Um, but Doctor Strange will obviously do mystic damage. Uh, these are all her attack types, so the attacks she can do each round, um, and during a round she'll have two actions to do them with. Uh, and then these are her superpowers. So her superpowers have different types. There's basically active ones that she can activate during her activation. So I just said active so many times in a row. Uh, but they all cost power. You don't start with any power. You usually take power either by doing um, abilities or um, by taking damage. So you always take gain power. You, the matter you get basically, the more damage you get, you're all, you're all Hulk in this game. Uh, the more power you earn, and then when you spend it, you remove it from their card. But some of her attacks, like Strike, after this attack's resolved, the character gains power equal to the amount of damage dealt, will also charge her up. So she can always strike and then earn power that way. So you're gonna, basically power is a resource you have to build and spend, build and spend, and you can't just like all in and use it all the time. Um, so, so for instance, her active ability is binary form until the start of the character's activation, add two dice to its attack and defense rolls. So she just like, she hulks out basically, but it's five power. So it's gonna cost a lot to do. Uh, and then the Danvers special, choose an interactive terrain feature for an enemy character, both size three or less, sorry, an, or an enemy character, both size three or less, and within two, uh, and throw at medium distance. The super can be used once per turn, so she can just like huck somebody. And then these are the um, all the time ones. They are basically her um, her always on superpowers, energy absorption. When this character is defending against a energy attack for each wild the defense roll, um, they may change one of the attacker's criticals. Uh, wilds or strikes to a blank. This character gains a power for each one change in this way. So basically, whenever you hit her with wilds, she just sucks them into herself, gains power, and then turns them into nothing. Uh, and then she always has flight and immunity to poison as well. So flight means that when she makes moves, she counts as height five, so she just flies over top of stuff. And if she gets hit with the poison ability, she's just immune. And when she flips over, her, her stuff can change. So she keeps binary form and her special uh, energy absorption and flight, but then her attacks... Or is it? Oh, they do get this. They do. They just they power up. So like the rocket punch. No, is her abilities power up? What powers up here? No, she's just man. She's really good. Some of the other characters really change, but she doesn't change that much because she's she's Captain Marvel. She's the most powerful Avenger, I guess. Point break. All right. So <laughs> there's your there's your basic uh, stats on the cards. Um. Yeah. Characters and objects, there's characters and objects. Uh, objects are a piece of terrain, characters are the models on the table. Uh, effects are things that cards and, and characters do. Uh, the attack types, so your attack type has a type, and again, we'll look at a card here. So this is a physical attack, this is an energy attack. It has a range, so what range band it is. This one's range two, the strike basically, which means it's three inches away. Um, there's a, a strength for it, the like barbell. Uh, it's strength five, rolls five dice when attacks, and there's an energy cost. Some of them cost energy to do. So her rocket punch, for instance, it's super powerful, and it's range three, seven dice to attack, but it costs her three power. Um, and it has a wild card effect, which is stagger. So there'll be effects underneath in the bullet points. So like, the, like I said, strike after it's resolved, they gain power equal to the damage dealt. She powers up with that one. Uh, rocket punch is on a wild stagger after this attack is resolved, the target gains the stagger special condition. Um, stagger is a condition where you have to take the shrug off, the, the like remove a condition action before you do anything else because you're, you're basically just losing an action. Uh, we went through superpowers and how they can be reactive. So we didn't see one on her card, but there is a, a third type. Actually, I should mention reactive with this little symbol right here. They have a trigger. 
Uh, the reactive ones usually also cost power, but when the trigger goes off, they will um, get to be used. So this one's, uh, for instance, Crossbones has Inured to Pain. If this character would suffer damage, it may use a superpower, reduce the amount of damage by one. So it spends a power basically to, to not take a damage. Because Crossbones is, he's been hurt so many times. He's ba Crossbones is basically Bane and Jigsaw, like put together. It's, it's bizarre. Uh, leadership, so leadership I mentioned earlier, it's when you take your team affiliation. So if you were to take Avengers, Captain America would get to unlock his leadership ability. If you're not using Captain America as the leader of a team, he doesn't get it. So his specific ability a day like any other, um, each turn you may reduce the power cost of the first superpower used by each allied character by one to a minimum of one. So like if you have like a three powered superpower, uh, like this one, like binary form would cost four instead of five. But only the first one they use costs one less. They don't get to be one less for all of them. And there's no range for that. It just happens. Uh, dice, you went through dice, crits, wilds, hits, blocks, blanks, and failures. That's just called failure. I like critical failure better. Uh, and then measurement, um, range and movement. So range is, of course, the measuring widgets. And it's um, one is the side of any of the widgets, because one inch. And then two is three inches. Three is six inches. Four is eight inches. And five is 10 inches. Uh, close point to close point. You can bend your movement ruler to place the, the model when you want to use it. Sometimes the movement rulers can't be bent, like for a throw effect or something like that. It has to be straight, and it'll mention that. Uh, team tactics cards, like I said, you're going to pick some. Uh, they have to be either an ally or a unaffiliated if you're going to use a team. And then they will all do things, basically, that can be played. To play a team tactics card, you just follow the instructions listed on the card and pay any power costs as described. Once it's been played, it's discarded and can't be used for the rest of the game. Uh, team tactics cards are not kept secret during the game. Make sure that your opponent, uh, you know what your opponent's capable of. They're always put face up. And so here we go into setting up a game. So you're going to jump right from there into how you actually set up a game. So you play on a 3x3 three three surface, create the mission. So for this one, they're telling you to play Riot Sparks uh, over Extremis, the one we, we, we looked at earlier, and struggle for the cube. Uh, and then place them face up. Assemble your squads. Now, I don't know why they did this. They have perfectly good team squads here for your first game, but they, they tell you to use... Captain America, Iron Man, Captain Marvel, Doc Ock, and Crossbones on one team, and then Red Skull, Black Widow, Spider-Man, Baron Zemo, and Ultron on the other. And I'm like, why wouldn't you just do the Cabal against the Avengers? Like, I guess that you're highlight, you're showcasing the fact that you can do anything against anything, but like, it's not iconic. <laughs> like, it's not as, that's not as cool. Um, and then you prepare your team tax hands. The player with Captain America squad takes uh, Ricochet Blast. They, they just, they, they basically dictate what you take. Player characters in range on the deployment card, set up supplies, place all tokens, uh, the range movement tools, and the dice next to the battlefield. And then assign priority, Captain's America squad takes priority in a normal game, you'd roll off. And the, you'd know who have priority for the whole turn. Objective tokens. So some crisis cards involve uh, interacting with objective tokens. Anytime a character's within one range of an objective token, they can spend a power to interact with it. So it requires power, not actions. Um, what happens when a character interacts with an objective tokens listed on each crisis card special rules? So civilian tokens are one type. While well, civilians don't take part in combat, and not all of them are equally saved, and they might put up some resistance. Asset tokens are key items. Targets of opportunity. Um, not everything is something that can simply be picked up. Uh, target of opportunity token represents critical locations or point of interest. Is you anything from a secret base to um, entrance to a gamma radiated wasteland? <laughs> Uh, some rules allow a character to pick up an objective. A uh, character that picks up an objective a token is holding that token. Place it on the character stack card. When a character holding one or more tokens is dazed or KO'd, they drop all objective tokens they were holding. Uh, place tokens in the battlefield within range two of the characters with holding them. The opposing player of the character that was dazed or KO'd places them. They don't have a size stat and don't obstruct any character's movements. A character within ra range one of objective token is contesting it. So you can hold it by contesting it. In the mission we talked about earlier, you're trying to contest for VPs, the um, little consoles. If there's no healthy characters contesting an objective uh, token, the player with the most injured characters contested, so it's basically trumping healthy trumps injured. Uh, and characters with dazed tokens can't contest because they, they are too dazed. Some crisis cards allow players to control con uh, objectives. When a player controls an objective, place a token showing they're controlling it. This removes any other player's control token. Each can one be controlled one at a time. Once an objective token is controlled by a player, they remain controlled by them, regardless of the proximity of other characters, as long as the token remains there. So basically, you can secure something and move forward and secure something else later. Player wins immediately when they score 16 or more VPs. If the player scores 16 or more VPs simultaneously, the one with more VPs wins. If the tied, neither player wins. Instead, the game continues until one player scored one more VP, and then they win. If neither player is won by the end of round six, the player with the most VPs is the winner, yada, yada, yada. Uh, if only one player has characters in the battlefield, they immediately win. So you can win by tabling as well. 
Uh, and so parts of the round, power phase. Uh, power phase happens at the start of the round, all being the power phase, all characters gain power. Uh, and that's the one that you get each turn. Uh, then players resolve any player effects that occur during the power phase. So like for instance, charge. The charge superpower allows Baron Zeman to spend two power and an action to immediately perform a move action followed by an attack action. Because the superpower grants these actions, the move and attack don't count towards the two actions during his activation. And power phase, then resolve all effects of the crisis cards that occur during the power phase. So gain a power, resolve any effects during the power phase, turn with player with priority, and then resolve the effect of crisis cards that happen during the power phase. And player with priority chooses the order they happen in. And then activation. So activation, every character gets two actions to do one of the following. Move, attack, use a superpower, or shake a condition. So you can shake like poison or stunned or staggered or whatever if you need to. Um, and we're looking at uh, a whole bunch of like anytime abilities and stuff too. Um, whenever the real Saiyan effect ability tactic or superpower can be used anytime, it doesn't literally uh, it me doesn't mean literally anytime the player wishes. These abilities may be used before or after an action is taken or effect is triggered, but can't interrupt another action or effect. So you can't like use a superpower midway through an action to like change the outcome of the action. And you can also pass a player can end their turn without activating a character if at the start of their turn they have fewer characters without activated or dazed tokens, and their opponent does. So you can't get an activation control basically if you knock out a bunch of people. Player possesses, who passes can still play team tactics cards before declaring the end of their turn. And then cleanup. After all characters have activated, the round moves to the cleanup phase. Players score victory points for controlling, securing, or holding objectives. Then resolve player effects, then the effects crisis cards. Uh, then all characters that are dazed will remove their damage. Sorry, then characters that are dazed will remove all damage, special conditions, and the dazed token from their stack card and flip them over to the injured side. If the player that activated the last character in the activation phase has priority token, they pass their opponent, so you trade back and forth priority for the round. Uh, players then remove all activated tokens from characters, move the round token to the next mission round, and begin with the power phase. So that's important to note is that you remain, basically you can't kill a character, you can't put them to KO'd in a single round ever because they never flip their card until the cleanup phase. So unless they start a round injured, you can't just like wipe somebody out. And I actually kind of like that. It means that the alpha strike isn't so like horrifying. You can't have Hulk just kill somebody in one go. Now I'm sure there will be special in-game effects that you might be able to flip someone to injured, even flip them back by healing them. Um, but the fact that you don't have the ability to just like one off somebody, I think is a, is a pretty, it's a pretty cool element of game design because these are superheroes. They shouldn't just die. Like, unless it's like, I don't know, man, unless it's uh Stormbringer Thor hacking <laughs> Thanos' head off. Even then he already cut his arm off and injured him. Like he didn't just kill him in one go. Uh, you always have to aim for the head. Uh, so yeah, I think that, I think that that's a pretty key, um, a pretty key element to to making this game fun is that you there's always a chance to come back basically you're not just going to die in one go unless you're starting injured uh general movement rules i'm not going to dwell too much on this stuff because it's it's all fairly simple um and attacks we already talked about attacks so basically if if you make attack against somebody so i'll just give you an example uh captain marvel is going to shoot her or just do a strike against oh i don't know who doesn't she like she doesn't like ultron so she's gonna punch Ultron real good. So she has a, uh, a five for her strike stat. Um, it requires zero power, so she doesn't have to use any power to do it. Ultron has a four defense against um, physical attacks. So he'll roll four defense dice. So they roll simultaneously. She rolls her pool, he rolls his pool. So he got a uh, crit failure, so a fumble, which cannot be affected or rerolled. He got a single strike and he got a wild. So the wild will work as a single block. She got a strike, a wild, and a defense, which does nothing. Um, because nobody got any criticals, there's no additional dice or rerolls. So he got a grand total of one to her two damage. Um, and then apply damage. After resolving the attack, if um, applying any effects that occur before the damage, the attacker still has more successes remaining. The defender uh, adds damage tokens equal to the amount of damage inflicted. So a character can only suffer damage equal to the stamina stat. So he'll take one damage basically of his six and go down to five. And she'll trigger her effect then, the, uh, any wilds. Uh, sorry, after this attack resolve, the damage, uh, it's actually just doesn't even require a wild, it just happens automatically. The wild doesn't do anything. She just gains uh, a power point because she's sucked a bunch of life out of Ultron basically by doing that. Um, and that's it, that's a, that's a basic one. Now let's say he hit her back, he could do an energy blast. He has an energy blast that's five and she has four defense against energy. So he'd roll and get, holy moly, so one, two, two wilds and two strikes, and then she'd roll her defense dice and get a crit 
and a strike. So the crit allows you to roll an additional die. I'm, I'm going to get another crit. That doesn't allow you to roll any more crits. Um, and then uh, she has energy absorption. So she's got two successes to his one, two, three, four. But when this character is defending against uh, beam attacks, each wild card can be changed to a blank. So these become blanks and she gains power because she absorbs the energy attack. Uh, and then, sorry, these become blanks and the strikes stay the same. Uh, and then she actually cancels the, the attack because she gets two successes to his two successes. So that's a neat, a neat example of how Carol Danvers just soaks up basically like energy attacks and powers up. Seems like Captain Marvel's real good. Seems like, seems like she is real good and she's gonna be real good. Um, which would make sense because she's the most powerful Avenger. Uh, and so anyway, um, other special types of attacks, beam attacks, area attacks, the rules for those. Character damage, how much damage you take, and then um, I should have noted that anytime you take damage, you gain a power as well, because you get mad. Uh, you can't take excess damage, and special conditions. Line of sight, hey, if you can draw line of sight from base to base. Terrain, has different sizes. So benches, small crates, and lampposts are all size one. Dumpsters, crowd tubes, and cards are all size two. Kiosks, billboards, and food cards. Trucks, blah, 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 blah. Monoliths, buildings, and pyramids are size five. <laughs> Um, you also get throwing a train feature. When a character throws a train feature, the characters position the movement tool with one touching. Um, you, you basically throw it and then have it collide. If a train feature is thrown, it's destroyed and moved from the table. If the character's overlapping train feature, when it's destroyed, place the character directly on the battlefield in the same position when the train feature is removed. If thrown train feature collides with another train feature, then they're both destroyed. So you can actually level the table. This is a pretty, pretty common superhero game feature and was one of my favorite parts about some previous superhero games I played is that you can just like level the battlefield by throwing stuff. Uh, dodging, when the train feature or character collides, um, then the character rolls dice equal to its physical defense, add an additional die to the dodge for each uh, crit that's rolled the initial roll and apply any dice modifiers. Um, the character takes damage equal to the size of the terrain. Uh, feature or thrown character plus one, uh, reduced one by each success basically, each wild block or crit in the roll. So you can dodge the, the thing that gets thrown at you. But it's, it's size plus one for the amount of successes you have to beat. And then cover, you get an automatic success or block basically when you're in cover. But to be in cover, you have to be within range one of it. A straight line uh, can be drawn from any portion of the attacker's base through the cover to the defender's base. The attacker's not within range um, two of the defender. So when you get too close, you lose cover. And then special conditions. If you're bleeding, you suffer damage at the end of activation. Um, staggered, the character must make a shake action as its first action, and then it removes the stagger condition, and then stun. If an effect would cause the character to gain a power, it gains only one power if it gain, would normally gain more. And then here's a section on all our characters. Yeah, and that's it. Crisis protocol and building instructions. And there's a rule book, and then you get a nice handy quick reference on the back here. So there we have it, a look at Marvel Crisis Protocol. I'm pretty stoked to jump in and start painting these guys. It is super fun painting superheroes because you're basically just painting people in pajamas. Um, I'm going to do a whole series, I think, on uh, contrast painting a lot of them because they're all bright colors. And yeah, you'll get to see a Let's Play real soon. So um, I hope you did this look at the latest, or actually first offering from Atomic Mouse Games. This is their first thing. Uh, there's gonna be a whole bunch of character expansions. They've already spoiled a whole bunch of them online. Um, it's Thor and Valkyrie is an expansion. Hulk is an expansion. They, you are, you are spending licensing money on this stuff. If you've ever played a superhero game before, you're gonna expect to pay a bit more of a premium for the number of miniatures you get. But you gotta remember that you're, you're buying something that's had to be licensed. So it's always gonna be a bit more spendy than miniature games where the people making them own the IP. Um, so you're expecting to pay about 40 bucks US for each two characters that you get or one big character. I think Hulk's 40 bucks by himself, maybe a bit more. Um, and all the individual packs like Thor and Valkyrie, I think are 40 bucks or so. So it, but again, you need 10 guys to have a team. Um, and you're, I mean, you're, you're building your favorite team. This is a game just as much for collectors and painters probably because they are big, nice models. Um, as it's going to be for miniature war game rooms and miniature war game enthusiasts. Cause the game itself is fairly simple. Most of the complexities on the card, the core mechanics are really simple. If you played monster apocalypse or shade spire, um, the whole opposed dice pools and rolling strikes and credits and, you know, dice triggers and stuff like that's going to be pretty familiar. Uh, and the movement's super simple and you can destroy the table. So <laughs> I expect this to be a real popular pick up and play um, game with the painting crowd as well. Uh, and for folks who don't often play games but love to paint, this is probably a good one for you too. Uh, I'm pretty much guaranteed to have to teach Cash to play this at some point because when he saw this box show off, he lost his in mind. Um, and immediately, immediately, I mean, it's, he, 
it basically whenever a superhero game shows up, he loses his mind. But this is the Avengers, and he loves the Avengers. So I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you for more Marvel Crisis Protocol soon. Till then, I'm Ash. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.